if you guys are lacking coins for that team of the season, then check out IG Vault with the link down below. It's so easy to buy for them, and they're by far the quickest site around. They even update you as your coins go in. Use code Kurt for 6% off. What's up guys, Curtis here and welcome to a brand new FIFA 16 video. Today we have some transferred players. I've decided to put together an entire 11 of transferred BPL players only. I didn't want to mess around doing hybrids yet. I'm going to wait for some more transfers to come out before we do that. But today we have the full BPL transferred squad that you can do at the moment. Now there's some players that are missing which I'll mention throughout the video. But I want to say a couple things before we get into it. Last time you saw me, I said I was going to upload for two weeks straight. That didn't happen, did it? I I don't know how to explain it, but during the summer when it's so hot and my hay fever's going crazy and I'm away, like, it's so hard for me to stay consistent and it really annoys me. Like, for the weekend, I was back home. I was watching all the Euro stuff beforehand, like, with different people and I've not been here to record and it's so frustrating that I literally, I can't wait to come back and work, like, as crazy as it is. I was so excited today. I'm going to try and get, like, three videos done, just get so much work done. And I'm really excited for it. Seagulls are going mental out there. But I'm really sorry, guys. I hope you guys can uh, can accept my apology for how terrible I've been the last like, few weeks. And hopefully throughout this summer, there's a lot of transfer stuff. Hopefully we can keep FIFA fun until the new game comes out before we go absolutely ham. Now, let's talk about the video. On the bench, we've got a few players. We've got uh, the two German goalies that have joined the league. We've got Loris Karius and Ron Robert Zila. I'm not going to mention their prices on most of them because I don't know everyone's off the top of my head. I know Zila was relatively cheap. They got him on there um, on his release clause, I believe, literally for something like under 5 mil. Karius was a good deal. Matt Sells, I think that was 4.8. Good signing. Townsend, I think that's fantastic, fantastic signing for Palace. They've got so many good wingers now. Zaha, Balassi and Townsend. As soon as one of them's gone, they've still got another option there because they missed out on not having Balassi last year and I think that's fantastic. They're definitely doing the right things over in Crystal Palace and uh, I'm, I'm kind of happy for them. Then we have Mendy. It's not the Benjamin Mendy, the left back. I'm assuming they're related. Same surname. It's quite, in my opinion, a random surname. They're both French players, footballers. I'm sure they have some football in lineage. And then there's this guy that Leicester also picked up. I'm not going to include him in the squad but because uh, he was like 10k and I didn't want to pay that for silver. But let's get stuck into our first player. And I'll also talk about how it relates to the actual FIFA as well, and next FIFA on top of the actual real life signing. So Mandanda is an unbelievable signing. I, I don't follow the French League too much, but if you're going to get a team of the season in the French League, you've got to be pretty decent. Now, I hate him on FIFA. He is probably my least favourite goalie in the history of FIFA. I am never, ever good with him. So for that reason, actually, we're just going to go ahead. I'm going to put, no, we're going to put Zelia in goal. But we will continue to talk about Mandanda for a minute. I think this is an unbelievable signing for Palace. They kind of changed their goalies around a bit. I believe it was like Spironi, then Hennessy, and they kind of mixed it up this season. But Mandanda is an unbelievable signing, and hopefully for Palace, and hopefully in FIFA next season, he's a little bit better because he might be one of the more affordable French PBVA goalies. Because I just never buy um, Laurie. I don't know what it is, I just never do. Next up, we have Eric Miley, and I'm not going to sit here and tell you guys that I know a lot about this guy, because I really, really, really do not. I can't even remember how to pronounce it. I got it right in the last episode. Now, I can't remember if it's Bally or might even be Bailey. I can't, I can't remember. It might even be... I, I do not know. I cannot even remember off the top of my head how to say his name, so I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I do. But it's a big money sign in Mourinho. Obviously, he likes the player. He's a good defender, I've heard. He scores quite a few goals for a centre-back. Very interesting signing, relatively affordable price, not too crazy. Similar situation to Gabriel when Arsenal picked him up. He came from the same team, same league, and he's had a good season over there. So he could be very, very good for United. He could also be terrible. Again, why do Seagulls, I don't even live near the sea. I live like an hour and a half away from the sea. Why do they feel the need to go mental now? They have all week to do it, and I finally record a video, and they think, oh, now's a great time to do it. But anyway, next up... We have Harvard Nordvai. Again, I don't know too much about this player other than that he used to play for Arsenal. I haven't really followed his career since then. I do remember when he was at Arsenal, though. I saw him a few times in the Capital One Cup. Seems like a cool signing for West Ham. A very, uh, very different one. It's, of course, allowed James Tompkins to go to... Uh, maybe Crystal Palace. I could be wrong. I can't remember where James Tompkins gone, but he's gone for like 10 million. So that's obviously Nordvai is allowed for that to happen. I think centre back's where they're going to play him. I can't see them playing him in DM. They've got a lot of defensive midfielders, but a good signing. Even if he's just in the rotation of the three, it's a very, very good deal indeed. And next up, 
We have Joel Matip. This is one that hasn't really got much like publicity because, of course, he was signed on a pre-contract agreement in January. He cost me 9k. He's one of the more expensive players in this team. I'm not sure why. I'd have thought uh, Bally would have been more and he was 3.8k. So very weird that, I guess, because he's higher rated. But um, a very, very good deal, I think. He's a six foot five centre-back and he's also pretty quick. Amazing. Like, you, you listen to that and that sounds perfect for Premier League. Physical and quick. What more can you want in a centre-back? He's had a really good few years over in the Bundesliga and to pick him up on a free like that's pretty incredible Klopp obviously knows a bit about him playing against him in the Bundesliga and honestly that just seems like such a smart smart deal now we're going to get on to uh, to one that gives me a little bit of happiness it's probably the only one I'll see this season and that's Granit Xhaka I mean he's had a fa I know he missed a pen at the Euros and I'm sure you guys are going to let me know that Ozil also missed too but Xhaka did get two man of the matches in the first two games and played really well in my opinion. He impressed me. So as a gooner, the bias there, I'm very, very happy with that signing. I'm looking forward to seeing how he settles down in the Arsenal squad this season. Apologies for how bright he is over here as well. I notice if I go this way, like the screen... Anyway, I am very excited to see how he actually gets on this year and hopefully he's uh, as good as he has been for Switzerland. And it was quite an expensive fee. And a lot of people have said to me, oh, look at all what other business some teams are doing, getting players much cheaper. There's two, two answers I have to that. There's also people spending just as much crazy sort of money on some players. And also, Arsenal have so much money and we don't spend it. So I honestly don't care if we spend 50 mil on him. As long as he's good, that's all I care about. But next up, we have Victor Wanyama. One of the examples of a cheap player. I think he was like 10, 12 million for Spurs. Very solid player. He's done very well for Southampton across the years. And he is a very decent player indeed. Very cheap on FIFA, I don't know why it's so cheap already, but so despite the fact it's ridiculously hot in here, I've had to close the window because people are deciding to shout outside the window. But anyway, Wanyama could prove to be an amazing signing for Spurs and could be exactly what they need. I forgot to where I got up to, but who cares? Anyway, next up is Nolito. In my opinion, this could be one of the signings of the summer. If they use him well, what a deal this is. It was like 12 million, 12.8 mil. I mean, he's had an incredible season in the BBVA, and he's. But if, if you're in the Spain squad, you're a good player, right? And if you cost 12 mil, that's crazy. That is mind blowing to me. 12 mil for this guy at his release clause. I wish Arsenal would have signed him. He's got to be better than Joel Campbell, better than Theo Walcott on the form he's at. Such a shame. Maybe we couldn't offer him the wages that he wanted, but in my opinion, an amazing signing for City, and it's going to be very exciting to see how he gets on. Now. On this right mid side, we could be seeing someone like Mikita in here very shortly, or Mikatarian, however you say it. Everyone always tells me off how I pronounce his name because it looks like he's signed for Man United. It looks like it's a done deal, but of course, it's not been announced, so he's not actually in the game. And it could be announced by the time I upload this video. Who knows? But on the right hand side, we have Sofian Faguli, another free transfer. I I think, I'm pretty sure it's a free transfer. And what a sign in this is. Again, he's had a bit of a dodgy season this year over in Spain. I think it's because he's like a bit of a dodgy character. But I feel like Slavin Bilic is going to be the sort of guy that will bring the best out of him. If he's going to mess around, Slavin Bilic will probably just knock him out. And he, he will be sorted straight away. So, if he can play like I know he, like I've seen that he can in the past, he could be a very influential player for West Ham this season. Next up, we have yet another Man City signing. I actually have... Uh, center, I'm playing him centre mid in Cam, but what a player Ilke Gundogan is, provided he can stay fit. I know he's actually out until the end of August, but when he comes back, if he can stay fit, he could be very, very influential for uh, City indeed. And then he said Bayern. He's not going to buy him. I know most Dortmund players do, but again, like I said, he could be so important for them in the central midfield position. Torre possibly won't be involved next season. You know what he's like. I don't know if he's going to stay and actually put some effort in under uh, Guardiola or what. Who knows? But... A fantastic signing, nonetheless. Less. And this one is one that I don't know why I'm surprised about it, but I just was. I, I mean, look at the amount of strikers they have. I mean, we have Giroud and a like, broken Welbeck. But you look at Chelsea, I know Pato and Remy and Falcao are probably all going to be going. But that's why, what a flipping signing this is. He's been amazing in Ligue 1 last season. Could he be another Lukaku? Will they actually give him game time or will they let him go? Who knows? But I think that's an absolutely brilliant signing. I don't know what fee they paid for him, but personally, uh, that's the sort of thing. Again, when you're a Chelsea, when you're an Arsenal, a Man United, you have got so much money. Just spend it. Arsenal have got all this money and we don't spend it. Chelsea, Chelsea do spend it, but uh, like... He's a player that will be important if they want to get back into Champions League football. So personally, I think that's a fantastic signing. Now, talking of players that are a lot of money, 
I mean, we, we are going on to an interesting one here. Now, we're not talking about Zlatan. I didn't want to spend 350k to get him, all right? So apologies for that. There's no Zlatan in this squad. But we do have Sadio Mane. This one's a little bit out of left field. He was very heavily linked with Man United, like big time linked. But it just never happened. And he's gone to Liverpool for quite a lot of money. But as I was saying, if Liverpool want to get back involved and they think Mane's the one to do it, Spend that money. The TV deals are incredible right now. There is so much money in football that there is no reason not to go ahead and splash crazy, crazy money on players like Sadio Mane. He is incredibly expensive, but honestly, I do not think that Liverpool care in the slightest. If someone like him, why not spend the big bucks if you've got it? Just buy him. And I think that's the case with a few players. And obviously, Xhaka, Gundogan, Bichuayi. Batshuayi, sorry, uh, Bali at the back. There's so many players here. Even Palace. Palace are spending a lot of money in this window, and it's so clever. If they want to solidify themselves as a decent team, spend the money. There's so much money in the Premier League, and I think if you're not spending, you're going to be missing out. TV deals are incredible, so spend some money. Really quickly, I thought I may as well just scroll through the concepts and look at a few of the different players that obviously have just come in with transfers. We've got obviously Ibra. I didn't want to put him in because he was so expensive, 300 plus K at the time I recorded. And for the sake of just showing you guys in a video, I did really want to buy him. So he's obviously the biggest transfer to the BPL at the moment. Also guys, let me know in the comments down below if you'd like to see me do this around other leagues in the future too. I could easily do it and I think it'd be a lot of fun to do so. So just let me know in the comments down below if you'd like to see that. But a couple more players, obviously that are part of the summer transfers. Cadrado's return to Chelsea. I'm not sure if he had a card at the start of the season. It's very possible that he did. Uh, on top of that, Chesney you'll see in seconds returned uh, when we get to the 79 rates. It might take longer than I thought to scroll through this, but Chesney has returned from Roma. I can't remember if he had a card at the start of the season again as well. He could have done, he could have not. I can't remember uh, exactly. It's going to take too long to scroll between it, but we've got Chesney's back, Remy Carbea's returned, uh, Marco Marin, Stecklenberg's at Everton, Jacarini's back at Sunderland, Virginia's back at Sunderland, Luis Alberto to Liverpool, uh, Van Ginkel's back at Chelsea. Uh, I've got a whole list of them here. Wellington Silva, Jenkinson, both for Arsenal, Callas back at City, uh, 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 Chelsea, sorry. Uh, a few different players to Watford. So there's a lot of different transfers that have happened. But like I said, if you guys would like to see me do this exact sort of squad on all the other leagues throughout the transfer window, let me know in the comments down below. That would be absolutely fantastic. Smash that like button for the return. Subscribe if you're new around here, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Goodbye. Come on, Wales.